what is spirituality? Spirituality, in my viewpoint, is a thought, an emotion, an experience that you can relate to in the here and now. If it's anything beyond your reach of understanding, it is not spiritual. Okay? Now, for instance, like a story, especially a fictionist story, uh, you can't relate to because you know that there aren't uh, talking rabbits. You know what I mean? Like if you have read a story and there's a character that's uh, like a, a sort of a humanoid rabbit or whatever, you know that stuff doesn't exist. But the story itself has a moral to it in which that moral, again, can help you relate to in real life, then it's the moral of the story that you can row from. But it's not the story itself. Okay, Why is it so important to understand? Because there are countless people out there right now, even though especially on YouTube, who are claiming to be spiritual, and they're giving you all kinds of different stories, because what they are, the stories, on what's out there. Okay, and a lot of people are accepting these stories as truth, as um, as spirituality. That's something that they learn this information, therefore they grow. And they don't really realize they haven't grown or shit. <laughs> and I'm going to prove it to you why that is the case. Why it mu- in, or- in order for you to be taught something, it needs to be relatable in the here and now. Why? I'm going to prove it to you. Right, I'm going to do what they don't do, is actually prove it to you in a way that you will understand it. Okay, Very simple. Think of a computer. I'm staring at my computer right now. Think of a computer. In order for us to have reached this high, high standpoint of understanding what a computer is in the first place, at first, as, as, a, as a race, we had to learn first what, was, what is metal. Right? What is metal? What is steel? What is plastic? What is electricity? What is it, you know, we need to even have a house or an apartment or whatever is, is, that is channeling this electricity through that house or apartment? All these different steps we had to learn first in order to get to the point where we are now. Okay, Spirituality does not mean that you start from one, one, one section, like start from A, and all of a sudden you just end up at C. That's not spirituality. It didn't help you grow. The whole purpose of growing is, look at a plant. Does it just all of a sudden you plant it and it like that, it all of a sudden becomes a tree? No. No, it's not. It takes steps. It takes time it takes uh levels you get what i'm saying it takes inches to grow into something uh to be full like to be a full tree and all that and it begs you to question why are there so many people out there who are talking about all kinds of stuff that you can't relate to that you can't prove that it exists um and they're expecting you to pay them money why is it even you know when i question things you know, I question these people, I question just, you know, the beliefs, I, I criticize things, you name it. Why is it that when I do all that stuff, that I'm perceived as the bad person? Well, I'm perceived as the bad person because I'm having these people realize that they didn't take the steps to get to that understanding. And they have to basically go back to square one and actually learn as to what all this stuff actually means. But... Why are these people saying all this stuff in the first place? Why are they wanting your money for... Why do they want you to exchange uh, something that you can't relate to for for money? Because money is something that we all can relate to in here and now. Okay? Money is what they need in the here and now. So they want something that is in the here and now because they know that's the most valuable thing because it's the thing they can use, but they are exchanging exchanging it for something that they that you can't use. And I gotta also explain this to you. Um, that all this woo woo stuff you're hearing people speak about, this is all philosophy. This is all ninth, ninth house type of shit. It's all philosophical thinking. A lot of people in this community like to treat philosophical stuff as its knowledge. It is not knowledge, people. It has never been knowledge. This is philosophical thinking. 
Philosophical thinking is important, though. Philosophical thinking is what le- leads us to the knowledge. It is, it is speculating. Does this work? Does this work? I don't know. I believe it does. I believe it doesn't. You know, uh, phil- if you know anything about philosophical thinking, you would know that uh, one word is very popular. It is, why? <laughs> why this? Why that? And, it, and again, we get into the belief system thing. But that's not knowledge. Another comparison that I've uh, heard uh, even astrologers say is that Sagittarius is the you know pastor, is the preacher, right? But preachers don't know anything, right? And immediately you're going to all insult it and all that. Uh, listen here, pastors talk about a religion that requires faith. Faith, faith is what? It's no knowledge of anything. It's belief, you know. And so that's what they're teaching. They're not teaching you knowledge. They're teaching you what they believe God told them to tell you and all that stuff. It's all faith-based, but it is not knowledge. So that house, that energy, not knowledge. Then why do they say then that Gemini is, you know, the sign, at least when, especially when it comes to the south zone, north zone stuff, that Gemini is, you know, is about teaching this this philosophical stuff but putting it in, in a way in which the ever, er, everyday person will understand it. Because it's how they're going to grow into that higher understanding. But i got to throw this in there, though. I find this interesting. And even further uh, further reasons why I don't... I'm, I'm, I'm even more careful about who I listen to these days to tell me what's the truth on things. Because... Back in 2015, astrologers were pretty much saying that uh, the Sagittarius was the teacher and that Gemini was the student. That's what I constantly heard. Now I'm getting like conflicting information that said, no, actually, uh, Sagittarius likes to learn stuff. And Gemini likes to teach you about what they learn, right? Now, does that mean that a Sagittarius can't teach you shit, right? Or that, that a... Uh, that a Gemini can't learn. Does it mean that? I mean, every sign can learn and teach whatever. Okay, but when we're talking about this, you know, specific access, that's like the the premise of all this is teaching and learning and stuff. So, which one's the teacher? Which one's the student? Well, again, you're getting. I've heard conflicting belief systems, uh, conflicting ideas as to what it philosophically means to them. You know, but my philosophical belief because I can't prove to you that this is exactly the way it actually is, but my philosophical belief on this is actually Sagittarius is the student, and that Gemini is the teacher. Why? Well, but let me explain this, though, first. I did not say that Gemini is the teacher of higher learning. No. <laughs> Gemini is the teacher of lower learning. Okay? That's not to insult or anything. I'm just saying, like, Aquarius is the higher air sign. Aquarius is the higher knowledge. Whereas Gemini is the low knowledge. So, even if you're taking... See, let me put it another way, too. Remember, telling you things that you can relate to in the here and now. Um, even if, like... I've heard astrologers say that Gemini likes to talk about the weather. You know, like, that's what Gemini is. Talking about everyday things. The weather. What's going on in your neighborhood, all that stuff. And okay, maybe that is to some degree. But then I'm like, but you're you're not listening. <laughs> uh, w- when I use that computer analogy, I took a higher concept, a higher philosophical idea, and I put it in terms that you can r- relate to and to be even able to understand that higher understanding. So not everything Gemini is, is quite like low, but it's going to be... It's going to be formed into a more lower everyday way of understanding things. You get what I'm saying? But either way, Sagittarius, student, uh, Gemini, is the teacher. And I got more sort of like proof that this is the case for me. I, this is where I lean more towards. Is Sagittarius is actually the student and Gemini is actually the teacher because... If you want to take my chart, at least tropical-wise, Sagittarius is my south node, Gemini is my north node. Well, as they say, said, a lot of them say this, is that you will live out, your, your first half of your life will be lived out as your south node. Well, 
I didn't exactly. This is where it gets confusing because I didn't exactly go and uh, do all these different places like across the world to learn stuff, but I was studying things. I was being in a philo- philosophical kind of uh, kind of mode, and now I have this urge to go teach stuff, things I've observed, you know. But then I also wonder, again, because. If if I wasn't going out there, since they say that you're supposed to live your your first half of your South Node, whatever. But if I wasn't going out there, living my Sagittarius life, like you know, across the world, was it was it was I supposed to? Was it because maybe my life got hindered in some way that prevented that to happen? And if that's the case, then you know, does. Does that mean that I gotta then now start to live my south node so that I can naturally progress to the north node? Even though I am like 35 now, I mean, and it, does that mean I hang out with a bunch of Sagittarius people because they say so that if you are hanging around people in your south node, that they're gonna you know weigh you down to your south node? And then other people will. I've heard other people say the opposite of this. That well, they didn't say the opposite. They basically said that you know that. Uh, that the person the south the person with the you know planets that are in conjunct your south node that they can actually be supportive, but it really depends on the person. Overall, right? Because if you didn't understand what I said, don't even don't worry about it because that's the whole point. <laughs> because there's so many con you know convoluted ideas out there that you don't know really what's the truth. You can't relate to any of it now, can you? And that's why there's so many conflicting belief systems because nobody knows really what the fuck they're talking about. Okay, when you start to talk about things we do understand, for instance, um, we all know we all know what a phone is. There's no argument there. We know what it's for, right? We all can accept that. We all know what the sun is, right? We know what the sun, the moon. We know what this planet is. We know things that that are easily accessible in the here and now. We know what that is. Nobody's arguing too much about that. But we start to argue about what's out there, what we don't know. And really a lot of us have a hard time growing in the first place because we're too busy being all philosophical. You get what I'm saying? So none of that, again, it's really spiritual. It's confusion. It's delusion. It's confusion. It's all that stuff. But when we start to focus on the here and now and what we do understand, and then we start to naturally grow uh, as a result to that, then that's when you gain real spirituality. And my final point, though, and this is where I'm going to piss off a lot of these people in this community, and I don't care, is anyone who is... <laughs> not even for sure if I were to mention this, because I've recorded this recording so many times already, but if anyone is selling you information, telling you these tarot cards, especially these tarot card readers, not all of them do this, though. You know, some of them are very generic, you know, but I'm going to get that into that in another video. But the ones who are absolutely telling you, oh, the spirit guide, your spirit guide, don't say things that your spirit guides, even though there's 20,000 people watching, you know, watching the video, how, whose spirit guides are you really talking about? But your spirit guides are channeling through me, through these cars, to give you a message, right? Anybody that is telling you all that stuff that you can't prove again to the, in the here and now, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. They're just after your money. Why, though? Why are they after your money? Because that money is something that they can relate to in the here and now because that is what they, that's what they value. Notice most people, if you haven't noticed this about people, most people value Things they can relate to in the here and now. Like money. That is why they're trying to exchange something that is very much out there. Where you can't prove whether it even exists or not. For something that is relatable. Such as money. If they were trying to exchange it's you know, exchange things in the here and now. With things that were here and now. Uh, you could be, you would be able to discern a lot better on whether it's something you want or not. You get what I'm saying? 
And this is where these a lot of people like, uh, that do this, they play on your gullibility. They play it on my gullibility. That's why I'm talking about it. They play on my gullibility as well. And it wasn't, again, until I had to pull back and realize, wait a minute, since you have no proof of this, I can't tell you that I know what you're telling me is the truth. I can tell you, though, that some of these people that I watch, whether it's astrologers, tarot card readers, you name it, sometimes they all have something to say to me that I, I, I you know, I, I learn from. But it's just like that, like, like that moral of the story analogy I already used. I, they hear, they say a lot of stuff, but it's maybe that one thing that one thing that they said or whatever that that you know that I learned. I said, yeah, I, I can totally relate to that because <laughs> I know that about myself because it's the in the here and now, and then I grew because of it again because it was the here and now. And I want to also make this last point clear. That is why you don't hear me talk a lot about my belief systems on this channel. Because, I mean, I can if you want me to, but I, all I'm going to say is in the very beginning is this is just my belief system. Take it with a huge grain of salt. I will always, I will try my best to always say that. To remind people, don't take my belief systems as 100% fact. Because this is just what I believe. You know? But I like, I like to stick to things that are factual. I like to take what I've observed, what people are actually doing, and make you aware of it. Even at the result of it pissing off people for me telling the truth. You know? And why do these people hate hate it? Why are these people going to hate it when I tell the truth on this stuff? Again, because people are going to be, be able to relate to it. People are going to start to wake up and change their mind and things and stop giving off their, their time, their power, their energy, their money off to people who are, again, playing on their gullibility with this stuff. That is why it's going to piss them off. That is why people, when I do question about this stuff, this is why they get pissed off. I'm not sure if I said this already again because I've recorded this so many times already, but they get pissed off because they they re they have to go back and and realize that they had they had to go start from square one again. They didn't naturally progress to that higher understanding. They're just usually regurgitating what somebody else said, you know, and they're not really they don't really know what they're talking about. But if you listened to this and understood it, <laughs> thank you for listening. I will talk to you later.